For the last adventure of our camp here, uh, we're going to be doing Build It that starts on page 268, as well as uh, one of our other adventures here the into the woods. Um, this is going to be a lot of me talking and then we're going to be putting a lot of pictures on screen as I talk. Um, this one also has a final project at the end to uh, build your project, so create a list of materials needed to build your project, put a check mark next to the tools on your list that you used for the first time. We're going to talk about a couple of the different projects that we have. Uh, to do or that you can do. Kits for these projects of course are going to be available online or you can use it from scrap wood in your garage. Um, this is an adventure where we insist on uh, a parent or guardian or den leader, troop leader, any adult leadership to be present because pretty much all of these tools can hurt you in some way so please get some adult supervision, some adult help, learn how to use this stuff. So uh, we have requirements one through four here and we're going to start off with one. Uh, learn about some basic tools and the proper use of each tool. Um, we'll put them up on the screen here as I discuss them. Learn about and understand the need for safety when you work with tools. So I'm just going to follow right along with your book here, page, uh, starting on page 270. Skilled tradesmen, including carpenters, plumbers, electricians, and bricklayers, use tools that are designed for their specific trade. For carpenters, those tools include hammers, saws, screwdrivers, and more. So for a hammer, a hammer drives and pulls nails. A common hammer weighs 12 to 16 ounces and has a curved claw for pulling out nails. There are lots of different kinds of hammers. For purposes of this exercise, we're going to be talking um, the normal claw hammer here. They might also have, uh, you know, different types and sizes of hammers, like a uh, ball peen hammer, uh, even mallets or sledge hammers all kind of fall under the category of hammer. It's basically something with a weighted end that you use to uh, hit other things with to accomplish a goal. Screwdrivers drive screws into wood. You'll probably need small, medium, and large screwdrivers for both slotted screws, which have straight slots in their heads, and Phillips screws, which have an X-shaped slot. There's also other kinds of drives. There's a square drive, there's Torx, um, there's the hex head, which are the kind of Allen wrenches here that we're gonna talk about here. So some screws have six-sided holes on top. To drive one of those screws, you need an L-shaped metal tool called an Allen wrench. Uh, again, they come in different sizes. You gotta be make sure you get the right size here. You can strip out the screw. A chisel looks somewhat like a flathead screwdriver. It has a sharper tip, however, and it is used for shaving away small amounts of wood. To use it, you hold it against the wood and hit the end of the handle with a mallet. And of course, uh, these are primarily just carpentry tools. There's um, a ton of different types of chisels that are used for wood carving and wood turning. An awl is a, used, a tool used for making small holes in wood and leather. It has a wooden handle and a thin, sharp metal point. Um, you can also use an awl to mark wood for cuts um, or a scribe for metal. Pliers. Pliers are versatile tools that let you grip and twist things, bend and snip wire, and do other tasks that require strength. Pliers come in many types, including needle nose pliers, standard, uh, which are slip joint pliers, uh, locking pliers, and wire cutter pliers. It is useful to have several types and sizes in your toolbox. Um, I carry a pair of pliers in the form of a, a multi-tool on my belt. Um, anywhere I'm using, or uh, anywhere I'm going out in the on a scouting adventure, but all of my uh, vehicles have a pair of slip joint pliers in them because they're just useful for a million things, so um, always keep those handy in any project you're doing. A handsaw. When you need to cut a board in half, a 14 inch rough cut handsaw or cross cut saw is a handy tool to have. It will certainly do the cutting for smaller pieces of wood. Since it fits in your toolbox, it will always be close at hand. It also discusses the coping saw here, which is when you want to make detailed or curved cuts in woods, plastic or foam, you'll need a coping saw. Um, a lot of times nowadays we're going to use power tools, but for the purposes of this project we use hand tools. Um, and of course always get help. Obviously any of these tools can uh, hurt you and uh, we want some adult supervision here, so just to, just to remind you guys that. A sanding block is a tool that you attach sandpaper to. You can also use soft foam sanding blocks that allow you to sand curved or contoured objects. Um, you can also just use like a chunk of 2 by 4 too, that works. The sanding block like we show here on page 272, those of that size there are really useful to have and they're a little bit easier on your hands to use, so we recommend getting one of those. Uh, the smaller of number on the sandpaper is the coarser the sandpaper, so you might use 50 grit sandpaper to shape a piece of wood and then 150 grit sandpaper to smooth the wood before you paint it. A file is a metal tool used for making wood or metal so uh, smooth, I'm sorry. It can also be used to sharpen metal blades and tools, and a rasp is a metal tool with a rough surface that is used to shape and remove excess material from wood or metal. A tape measure, uh, this is important, uh, several different kinds of tape measure here, but 
A tape measure lets you accurately measure pieces of wood up to several feet long. Um, we always use the saying measure twice, cut once, uh, because uh, once you've cut it, you can't put it back together. A 12 or 16 foot retractable tape measure will handle most jobs around the home. Uh, a lot of times they come in like a 25 foot length, um, so that's a general all around good purpose tape measure. Most retract automatically and have a locking mechanism to keep the tape from recoiling, which is rolling up inside the case until you want it to. Along with that, a carpenter's square helps you make perpendicular, uh, which is right angle cuts. A uh, six inch quick square will handle most small jobs. Of course, uh, we recommend using those so you can get nice and straight cuts that are, that are nice and square. A level, when you need to hang something such as a picture, a level helps make sure it doesn't tilt to one side for most Small jobs, a 9-inch torpedo level works fine. Um, we use levels that vary in size from the little 9-inch torpedoes all the way up to, you know, 6 foot for really long spans. So, uh, but just in my general toolbox, a little 9-inch torpedo works just fine. Uh, clamp is used to hold pieces of wood together firmly for cutting or gluing. C-clamps are common and come in many sizes. You will also find clamps that look somewhat like giant clothespins that are really strong. Um, Bar clamps are also a popular one that I use a lot. A vise does much the same thing as a wood clamp, and the main difference is it is mounted to a wood uh, workbench. A toolbox or tool bag. Whether you have a few, tool, a few tools or a few dozen, it's important to keep them all together. A good place to store them is in a latching toolbox or tool bag that you carry to wherever you're working. I generally tend to lean more towards the toolboxes as opposed to tool bags because I think it helps me organize my stuff a little bit better, but. Um, it also protects your tools from being uh, crushed or, or bent. So I generally tend towards a, a hard-sided toolbox, but if a tool bag is more convenient for you guys, feel free to use that. A couple of words about taking care of your tools. Uh, dry them if they get wet, wipe them off with a rag. You can put a little bit of oil on them to keep them from rusting. Um, use them only for your intended purposes. So this is a big one that people often uh, do that uh, break their tools, like using a screwdriver as a chisel or a pry bar. Uh, that's also a big one for your pocket knives. Don't ever use it to pry up on anything because you'll snap it off or bend your screwdriver or something of the sort. Um, put them back in your toolbox or tool bag when you're done with each one. That way you don't lose them and they won't be in your way as you continue working. Moving on to tool safety here. You already know that certain tools such as saws can be dangerous, but you ac can actually hurt yourself with any tools if you aren't careful. And protection. Uh, this, uh, wear gloves when handling lumber, carrying boxes of nails, and using saws. Even with gloves on, always know where all your fingers are when you are cutting and hammering. If any of you have ever hit your finger with a hammer, um, it is not a comfortable thing to do. It hurts. Put hand protection on. It's better that you run your saw or screwdriver into some leather uh, so it you know, it's better the, the cow hide than the man hide, as they say. Be careful of your hands. You know, you only get two of them. So head protection. Always wear a hard hat when you're working in an area that might have falling items or debris. So anytime any work is being done overhead, wear your hard hat. Making similar points here. You know, you only have one head, two ears, two eyes, two feet. You got to take care of them. Ear protection. Your hearing can be damaged very easily. Be certain to wear good quality ear protection when you're in an area that might have construction noise. Um, this can be just as simple as earplugs. I always keep those around because in my younger days I was bad about it and now I'm missing some hearing and it doesn't take very much hearing loss before you have a hard time communicating. Be uh, very mindful of that. Even something as simple as banging on a piece of metal can be really loud. So take care of your ears. Uh, once you lose your hearing, you're not getting it back. Eye protection. Safety glasses are a must on every project. If you wear prescription glasses, you can get safety glasses that fit over your glasses or you can buy side shields that slip into earpieces of your glasses. Uh, safety glasses prevent debris and dust from entering your eyes. My safety or my uh, regular prescription glasses are safety rated, but they don't have side protection. So if I'm doing something with uh, any possible flying debris or dust, I put on a pair of goggles that just simply fit over my eyeglasses. Uh, if I was still working in a construction setting or in a machine shop like I used to, for that case, I had prescription safety glasses that had side shields attached. If it's something you're going to be doing a lot of, invest the money. You can find uh, really inexpensive prescription glasses online nowadays, so it's definitely worth the investment to save your eyes. Wear good quality leather shoes with thick soles if possible. This type of shoe will protect your foot if something falls on it and will prevent a puncture if you step on a nail. Never wear sandals, flip-flops, or open-toed shoes when working with tools. If you're going to be around anything really heavy, a falling steel toe is recommended. The place I used to work as a machinist, they also required metatarsal protection. That's a shield that goes over the top of your foot so you don't break those bones if you uh, drop something on it. Um, 
the one castings I used to work on were 800 pounds, so if you dropped one of those on your foot, you'd be in for a bad day for sure. Lung protection. Cutting, drilling, and especially sanding create small dust particles that can irritate your lungs if you breathe them in. You can protect yourself by wearing a dust mask, which is for the preferred method, or by tying a bandana or neckerchief around the lower part of your face. We're learning a lot of things nowadays about wearing masks, aren't we? If you're going to be doing anything uh, with uh, chemicals or anything of the sort, you should also um, you should wear a respirator instead of a, a simple mask. The things that kind of look like a gas mask. So if you're doing anything with uh, chemicals or anything of the sort, you should, or uh, painting things like that, you should wear one of those instead of just a regular mask, but uh, I don't know if you guys have ever, hopefully not, but if you ever got a lung full of sawdust, you know it's not a comfortable thing. So how you should use and care for some of your tools uh, is also important. So tools that cut, you should keep them sharp. We know that a sharp knife is safer than a dull knife because you're not going to be putting as much effort into it. So if it gives way or uh, cuts loose, you can cut your hand really bad. Uh, this is something that I practice religiously even my chainsaws uh, pocket knives uh, hand saws chisels anything like that even your shears scissors snips anything like that i keep as sharp as possible uh, it's just a lot easier to make a, a cut with a sharp tool and it's much safer that way uh, obviously you keep your hands away from the saws and knife blades so if the tool slips you won't get hurt when you're using a saw make sure the item that you're cutting is held securely so that way it doesn't move around and you could accidentally cut yourself uh, be careful when you're hammering. If you miss the nail head, you don't want to hit your thumb. Uh, I've done that a couple of times. It does not feel good. Practice using your tools with an adult until you know how to handle them well. Practicing good safety skills with hand tools as a Weeblo Scout will help you prepare for greater challenges when you join a troop. Uh, we hammer tent stakes. Uh, we cut wood for firewood. So this is all stuff that you will use. Please, please always be mindful of your safety. I don't want anybody getting hurt out there. So Requirement number two. With the guidance of your Weebelos Den leader, parent, or guardian, select a carpentry project and build it. For part of that, uh, requirement three is to list the tools that you use safely as you build your project. Create a list of materials needed for your project. Put a check mark next to the tools on your list that you used for the first time. The best way to learn how to use tools is actually use them on a project. For requirement two and three, pick a carpentry project and build it. This can be, uh, there's a couple of examples in the upcoming, uh, upcoming pages here, but this doesn't have to be anything extravagant. Um, little toolbox, uh, bird houses are popular, bat houses. Um, I enjoy those kind of projects because they help out our uh, wild friends around us. Uh, bat houses are important to keep bats nesting in uh, their own little bat houses instead of, say, your attic. So build a bat house, bird house, toolbox, uh, material list, and tools required for a step stool, a paper towel holder, a uh, simple wall shelf. Go ahead and pick one of those and get some help doing it. And I'd love to see completed projects on that. If you guys uh, want to go above and beyond and build, you know, a little bookcase or something like that, get help with it. And I'd love to see pictures of it at our uh, virtual camps at uh, winnebago.org. Requirement four is to learn about a construction career. With your Weebelos Den leader, parent, or guardian, visit a construction site and interview someone working in a construction career. A construction site is an exciting place to visit. You'll See workers moving all over the place, carrying materials, using tools, and reading blueprints. The work may look disorganized, but it's all very carefully planned. Every construction project starts with a set of blueprints that shows exactly how all the pieces should go together and in what order. First, the workers lay the foundation, frame the building, add the roof and walls. Electrical wiring and plumbing come next, along with doors, windows, and light fixtures. Near the end of the process, workers add siding, cabinetry, wallboard, paint, and other floor, color, uh, and floor coverings. Once the building has been inspected, it is ready to be occupied. Some of the workers on a construction site do a lot of different jobs, including framing the building, installing doors and windows, and hanging cabinets. Others handle specialized jobs such as roofing or plumbing. Construction workers use their hands, but they also use their brains. A lot of measuring is involved, and good math skills are a must. Teamwork is also very important because construction workers have to cooperate with people working on the same things they are working on or parts of the construction process. Look for examples of teamwork when you visit a construction site. Um, when you interview a construction worker, ask questions like, what parts of the building do you work on? How do you acquire the skills in the job you use? Did you go to a trade school, learn on the job, or both? Uh, most of the time it's going to be both. What's your favorite part of working in construction, and what's the most fun building project you've ever worked on? A lot of these manual labor jobs, like uh, uh, plumbing and electricity, um, installing uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning requires some uh, trade school, welders, that kind of thing, but... Um, People are starting to shy more towards office jobs now in their 
in their schooling, but there's really good opportunities in the, in the construction field and in the manufacturing field. Very good money to be made doing these things. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, you should definitely look into going to uh, into a career like this because there is, uh, you know, good opportunities in, in any of these fields now. So, and of course there's uh, a shortage of these kind of skilled labor jobs now because everybody tends to go more towards an office job in their training. So there's, uh, you know, a lot of different construction careers that you guys can uh, learn about. You can learn about them online. Uh, doing some research on your own. Should set up a construction site visit, you can do this with your Weeblos troop uh, or as an individual. A lot of you guys um, have family members that work in these fields. I'm sure your parents probably know somebody that work in these fields. So get with them and set up an appropriate time for you to come tour the construction site. This doesn't have to be a long tour. But it is really neat to see those kind of things under under construction. That's going to conclude our uh, build it. Again, we'd love to see any projects you guys are working on and uh, we'll be right back with you.